everyone, how's it going? It's me, Jaylene, also known as Femme 4. Today we're going to be talking about threesomes, particularly this is going to be female, female, male threesomes. Yep. So not only double the fat and trouble, but triple the fun. <laughs> I brought on set with me my friend Alex from Switch Kitchen. He runs a porn production company here in Vancouver. So I kind of thought he would know a couple things about how to navigate threesomes for people because he orchestrates them so often. Alex, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? How long you running the company? Uh, long time. We've been in the kink industry and then yeah. I'd say about four years in the porn industry and I just, you know, was tired of hearing stories of photographers taking advantage of their models. So I started mm -hmm. a an organization, more like a collective of artists uh, like yourself, yeah. where we can do quality production and you know stuff that's really going to change the world and change the porn industry for the better. Cool. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. Previous video that I did do about how to just basically set up the three sims, you know, the pre-game, the playtime, and the after party. So we kind of wanted to cover more in-depth topics about more the female, female, male. Um, so I wanted to kind of bore talk about from the start to the finish. So we also want to know the best positions for it because that's also a really tactical tool to know. So I'm having those awkward knee jerks somewhere. I'm excited. I'm very excited. So I was just curious, Alex, what do you think in terms of what's the first move or idea mindset in terms of trying to get a femme for your female, female, male reason? Well, I think you're establishing your video before. So if you haven't watched that, go back and watch that. Yes. But consent and communication by far is the most important thing right off the bat. Make sure you're on the same page, have those things up. So yeah. what about the bar scene then? Or how do we get people through, you know, Tinder or something, you know, making those ideal approaches, um, like what do you say as a couple, what should you be doing? So starting off digitally, I think, is yeah. a great way um, to find a third the unicorn. Sure. So I use an app called Field yep. the most, or Tinder, and you mm -hmm. just are very straight up. You put a picture of both of you on there and you say this is what we're looking for. Yeah. You'll be surprised how quickly you will find people. So let's say you do have to go out to a nightclub yes. and it you just need to find somebody. Well, there are some things to think about yeah. uh, when you're looking for a third. You know what it's like to have a drunk guy yeah. come up to you yes. and hit on you and try to kiss you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not the most pleasant experience. A bit. Uh, girls know how to communicate and shut down a yeah. guy at the club all the time. As fans, we kind of already know that there's already going to be an aggression there, so we already yes. know how to defend ourselves immediately. What, what I find uh, with uh, couples hunting unicorns is sometimes the female can be the aggressor. Yeah. And so, let's say, same scenario, you're you're at a club and all of a sudden this girl who's attached to a couple, mm -hmm. she just comes straight up to you, starts grinding on you. I don't, not a lot of people are used to that. True. And so you start to almost like, oh, oh it's a girl, well, it must be okay. Mm -hmm. And you almost allow yourself to go through things that you might not be comfortable with if yeah. the gender was switched. For sure. And so, Making sure that as a unicorn you have very you know set boundaries, mm -hmm. but also as a couple you're not you know getting into this situation of breaking consent right off the bat. Coming forward as a fan, you want also to realize that it's two of you going up to her. It's not just you and you as an equal playing field, which obviously can add you know extra energy that you kind of have to almost work against if you feel like you're not totally comfortable in the situation. You have to go through two people's emotions and feelings at the exact same time. Yeah, earlier what you were saying about you know with feel or digital apps, you're presenting yourself as a couple. I yeah. feel that you need to do the same thing in the club. Yeah. If you want to go dance with a girl, you go up to the girl as a couple. And Not hide one partner. <laughs> yeah, in exactly. In the corner, in the shady corner of the club or something. Well, actually... You're like, well, I actually have my second here. <laughs> Contrary to popular, popular belief, it's actually easier for the dude to go out. He finds a girl and she finds him attractive and they're really connecting. Yeah. Then he brings her back to the girlfriend and says, hey, this is my girlfriend, she's down too. Like nine times out of 10, every scenario, mm -hmm. there goes, oh, this is a bonus level. Being the unicorn, you have to really ask yourself, am I completely okay with being with both of these people, not just to sleep with that one person in that duo. It's like you're a group on. Yeah. Deal. You kind of want to go and connect with each other a little bit more. Yeah. So what was kind of your next step, do you think? The play that I, I use, and it's not like a play as in like I'm trying to get them, yeah. but like I know full well at three in the morning, I, I, I'm tired. <laughs> I also like, for me, I like clear and coherent consent. True. And yeah. when there's alcohol or drugs involved, I'm not saying there was, but you know, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. So I always say get the number yeah. of the male or female, in this case a girl, mm -hmm. and then set up a dinner date for a couple yes. days later. I like it. When you're doing dinner, 
there's nothing I, I, I love foreplay. Yeah. And elongated foreplay. I find that dinner is like the biggest foreplay. It's, just, <laughs> it's a start to it all, it everyone. Is. And then when it's time to move to the bedroom or a place to relax, you already feel it's more comfortable. And I also think in terms of, you know, from a femme perspective, leveling that playing field between the femmes, like, for us, a lot of us, it, like, we're really high in our emotional language. We're taught it a lot more than, you know, than if I, so, you know, really connecting with someone over dinner, etc. really brings that, bonds that gap. If you're that unicorn going into a couple relationship, really giving mind to really pay attention to the femme involved, because just think of there's that idea, that maybe competitiveness of maybe they're going to be replacing me because, you know, obviously they identify the same gender. So, you know, really kind of showing them, I always like to put my knee underneath their ticket, like hand on their knee underneath the table a little bit. I think comfortability, and you touched this in your last video. Yeah. But like finding the lowest level common denominator for comfort and sure. then working with that. And if you haven't, please go back and watch that video again. Carver's are really well. It's needed. All right, so now we finished dinner and we're gonna head back to the place. What do you think is gonna be where you wanna head to once you hit that home where the dirty's gonna happen? Okay, so you successfully got to dinner, <laughs> things are still vibing, going yes. well. Yes. I say when you come back to the house, or let's say you had dinner at your house, you move to the couch or the bedroom right away. Not to just say, hey, we're gonna have sex. No. But just to recline and relax in a common space together. Yeah. I like the bed. Yeah. So what that would look like is I go to the bedroom, we all lay on the bed, different parts of the bed, we play a game. Maybe yeah. we have a conversation more. But as you're having that conversation, you'll notice that organically, the touching may I touch you. Yeah. Touching may I touch you. Yeah. It's right. gonna like naturally start to progress. You'll start yeah. to see like caresses. And then oh, that, gosh. yeah. And then that will progress into kissing. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's full. I also think in terms of, you know, like sexual energy, it takes some time to brew. And not only with that, but it takes time to brew between three people. Yeah. Once it's brewed, it's full boiling. I feel like it's an inferno when it comes with all those three different energies, but at the same time you want to make sure it's going to steep a little bit. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I also think that dinner and the space between dinner and just hanging out is a great exit space as well. Yeah. yeah. You break it down into dinner, conversation, and then sex, there's lots of stops on that train to get off. True. It's easier to say, you know, dinner was lovely, yeah. but we're not feeling up for things tonight, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Or you're laying on the bed and you're like, do you, do you want dessert? Let's have dessert and let's wrap it up. I'm feeling really tired. Mm -hmm. I also think with like the person who's coming into it, if one of the couple pulls a safe word, never take that personally. It's always okay. usually something with their own relationship that they're wanting to kind of bring more attention to just while you're not present. And that's totally fair for them to do. Yeah. Um, but don't try and think it's because of you. Okay, so let's say you're now in, in the bedroom. Yeah. You're laying on the bed. Things are starting to happen. Yes. Right? <laughs> I like to use this thing called the triangle of focus. Yes. And uh, made that Tell up about it. Yeah. specifically for in, in the porn I was doing, right? <laughs> uh, pretty much this is how it works. Is let's say my girlfriend's over here yeah. and you're the unicorn. Yes. And now you and I start kissing. Yes. As soon as you and I connect the bottom half of that triangle, yeah. we immediately focus our attention to that third point. Cool. to complete the triangle. Nice. So you and I start kissing, I'll reach out automatically to pull my partner in. A common thing what tends to happen is people are really excited uh, with connecting with a new person and so yeah. they elongate that connection. That few extra seconds of you kissing, you and I kissing can feel like a lifetime mm -hmm. to my partner. Yeah. And I want them to feel included. The main prize in terms of every sort of threesome that people usually get frustrated over is the connection factor. It's not, oh, they're kissing more than me. It's the idea that they're connecting more than I am. So always kind of bringing it back to the emotional factor that's behind it. With that, I would say particularly, uh, people kind of like break this triangle of focus the most would actually be the two girls. So, Interesting, yes. yes. I have been, I have I'm not gonna lie. I and have how that happens is that. like there's this, let's say, <laughs> you're, let's say you and I are a couple, yes. right? And we have yeah. the unicorn over here. Yeah. You are so anxious, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden, you finally start to connect with the girl, and now sparks are flying. You it's know, really it, fly. it's <laughs> happening. And before you know it, you're passionately rolling around, making it on the bed, fingering each other, and the guy's standing there with his dick in his hand watching. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> Not really knowing what to do. It's Not just like a slow pull motion. Where do I go, do right? Yeah. And so that triangle focus, once again, you go, as soon as you're starting to have that connection, you're starting to feel that takeoff, yeah. you go, how can I include the third person? How do you do that technical thing of, you know, all the different positions? Because three bodies can be difficult sometimes. Yes, three yeah. bodies is really difficult. Um, now, once again, there's a big difference between porn positions <laughs> and then reality positions. Yeah. A big rule of thumb, I'd say, in a real intimate situation with three people, mm -hmm. try to keep your faces towards each other as much as possible. So I'll give you an example of what not to do. Guy doing doggy yeah. to the girl, and the girl is eating another girl out who's also doggy. Yeah. Everyone's faces are away from each other. Sure, it may look hot on film, yeah, but course. in reality, not cool it's at all. Not, yeah. So the same thing, if we just simply put the guy on his back, you put the girl yeah. riding cowgirl and the other girl sitting on the guy's face, everyone's yeah. faces are kind of inward focused. Like in together. Yeah. Exactly. Super and it creates true. this intimacy. And one thing I really like about that position as well is, you know, kind of creating that equal level playing field for the fans is even if you're uh, heterosexual and you're actually not like kissing or being with each other, you can watch each other and even just have cute comments compliment each other about what each other is doing. So let's say it's a bi female, female, male. So yeah. let's nail some things you can do there. Yeah. A great warm up would be both girls making out while the guy eats both the girls out. Yeah. That's a great warm up. Yeah. Uh, another one would be both of the girls giving the guy a head, but they're kissing at the same time. Mm -hmm. That'd be another great warm up. A rule of thumb, well, if you, if you introduce vibrators, as well as dildos. Yeah. Like if the guy is open to being pigged, yeah. there's so many more <laughs> options. So the rule of thumb would be have toys. Honestly, one thing I always think about as a couple too is like if this is gonna be your first threesome, make it like a celebration. Buy yourself a toy. Like this is an excuse to yeah. get one. <laughs> With straight threesomes. Yeah, straight threesomes is here. So hetero, like both women are very hetero. They yeah. do not want interaction. No kissing. Uh, no kissing, none of like that, that, which is totally normal and fun. Yeah, totally cool. Uh, I, I would say that in all the scenarios where I've, I've worked with models or people that are very hetero, um, they are at least okay probably holding a vibrator or something because mm -hmm. uh, there's something that separates them and, and the person they're interacting with. It's like when you take a <laughs> this is gonna be a really weird analogy. When you take a stick and you poke a bug because it's something that you just don't really want to touch. It's not really your fancy, but you feel fine sticking it like that. Exactly. So yeah. the magic wand is the stick. It's, it's just, <laughs> the magic wand is the stick. And yeah. it so once again, yeah. toys yeah. can be very useful in this scenario. Let's use an example where the two girls want zero interaction with each other. They're yeah. okay being in proximity with each other, yeah, but they don't want to touch. The guy then becomes the center of a V. Or like a hinge, yeah, right? Right. And then you break the male down, the male anatomy down into sections. And so wherever the guest is, mm -hmm. so let's say she is on his mouth, mm -hmm. well then you would go to his penis. True. Then all of a sudden she wants to move down to the penis, well you might move over to his hand. He starts fingering mm -hmm. you. You simply just simply work around his body on the opposite mm -hmm. ends. It's like a ball game where you're in opposite ends. So true. Circle around each other. But hitting that home run. <laughs> hitting, hitting the home run every time. Yes. If you want a very successful threesome, yeah. uh, I have this phrase is two make one come switch. It's very much of a, of a sharing, taking turns, give and take kind of thing. True. Um, far too often in porn, it's all about the male coming. And as soon as he's had the orgasm, all of a sudden the threesome's over. No, no, <laughs> it's girls not. girls are left out of it? Exactly. What? You have to think of it taking turns. And there's yeah. actually, I would say, an order that you should follow. Guests first. Yes. So unicorn comes first. So you always want to make sure that they're not feeling left out because usually when I mean, you kind of assume is the couple is going to be more closer. We already know that. Yeah. So them kind of going two timing on that person, it's going to make them feel special and be welcomed. And then the guy comes second. <laughs> the guy coming, you don't want him to really come first because, you know, you get tired afterwards. True. People, penis owners get tired after they come. <laughs> so. Honestly, as a penis owner, one of the worst things for me because I, I I don't like FOMO. I don't like feeling left out. Yes. And so if I go first I want to join. while I'm recharging, I have to just simply sit and watch. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I wanna be in there. And so by going second Put me know, in coach. <laughs> But by going second, I, I feel like, you know, I've already accomplished the, like, the play. True. The yeah. guest is taken care of. Yeah. Now it's my turn. And then third is the primary uh, femme relationship yes. because you want her to feel like a queen. 
You hear that, everyone? <laughs> this is like my crown. It looks like devil horns right now, but it's, it's uh, the royalty that's on her. Yeah. So you have to really think of this two on one, make make yeah. one, two make one, the one two come. make one come. Yeah. Is that like a postcard or something? <laughs> I think we should make a postcard. A bumper sticker. If you guys want to have any more questions or anything, make sure you go see my, all my bonus links on my social media. Also, go follow Switch Kitchen. I'll put his links down below as well if you want to go see his porn production company, super cool stuff. Um, and also, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Okay, bye, everyone. See ya.